We'll call to order the City of Wilmington Board of Adjustments meeting. Today is Thursday, November 21st, 2024. It's one o'clock. Our first item on the agenda will be the approval of minutes from the October 17th, 2024 meeting. If there aren't any changes that entertain a motion and a second. Make a motion to approve uh, October 17th minutes. Is, is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, the next item, I'm going to read the Board of Adjustments introduction. Um, hearings before the Board of Adjustments are quasi judicial in nature. Decisions of the Board are based on a record of these proceedings. To grant a variance requires a concurrent vote of four fifths of the members of the Board. To reverse or modify determination of an administrative official requires simple majority. Evidence submitted to the Board for review becomes part of the record. Appeals of the Board's decision are to Superior Court and based on the record. Appeals must be filed within 30 days of the date of the filing of the board's order in the planning division. Hearing before the board is concurrent, conducted in accordance with its rules of procedure. Those who want to testify in a case are sworn as witnesses. The chairperson recognizes those who would want to testify their attorneys for presentation of evidence during the hearing. To ensure that all testimony is properly reported, please come forward to address the board, state your name, address, and speak clearly. Next item, we'll be swearing in everybody that's my Just speak today. Speak today, stand and raise your right hand. You swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, continue on. We have a, an item of old business. It involves 14 Wilmington Avenue, a variance pursuant to city code chapter 18, section 18-316 and to allow the removal of specimen trees and or encroachment into the critical root zone of specimen trees in the CS Commercial Service District. Tracy. Go ahead. You, you want to do it? Okay. Is requested to continue that item to December 12th okay. to allow them time to update their site plan. Right, so there's been a request to uh, continue that to the December 12th meeting. Uh, a motion. Back a motion to continue item one, 14 Wilmington Avenue to the December 12th. 2024 Board of Adjustment meeting. Is there a second? So I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Continue. Next item is item 650. Sorry, we want to make a note that the December 12th meeting will be held back in Salian Hall. What? <laughs> I apologize. And uh, 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 Chambers in City Hall at 102 North 3rd Street. Okay. All right. Noted. Thank you. Um, before we go, for, well, item 615 North Front Street, um, I have to recuse myself from this, but ask for the permission to be recused and ask that Patrick take over for that, that item if possible. We do have an alternate member present to fill in for you. Okay. So just All right. Maybe. And there has to be a vote to, let, to recuse. So I'd ask, if, I'd ask for a motion to let me be recused. I'll make a motion to recuse the chair. Thank you. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah, item 2, 615 North Front Street, extension of a variance grant January 19th. Excuse me. Let's the maximum building setback and location of parking in Central Business District, pursuant to City Code Chapter 18. Land Development Code Section 18-43, 18-44, and 18-34. Um, this request is just for an extension to a variance that was previously granted for 615 um, North Front Street to the maximum building setbacks, which is five feet in the Central Business District. And the applicant has requested setbacks of six feet and eight feet on two of the sides because this is a full lot development. And they had also requested a variance to the um, the minimum parking and said that so that park is going to be subterranean anyway. If there be any changes to the ordinance or the development code that would affect this variance, there haven't been any changes, substantive changes that would. That um, the applicant has not gone to TRC yet. They don't have the site plan that's approved, and that was to be. Do we have a motion to grant the continuance or the extension of the variance? 
I'd make a motion to extend it. Extend the barrels. We have a second. Second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Stepping down. Oh. All right, we'll move on to new business. Um, next item is a legacy point on Candy Lane, the variance for Article 6, Section 18 494, which requires installation of sidewalks along Candy Lane. Um, Grace LeMay would be the one presenting. Staff is going to request a continuance to this item. Um, there was a deficiency in the notice sent, and so we will redo notice and continue this to the December 12th meeting. The applicant is aware they were informed they needed to cut them. Okay. That being the case, could I get a motion for that continuance to December 12th meeting? Make a motion to continue item three, legacy plan on Shandy Lane with the December 12th meeting with Daily and Bob. There you go. Even total exclusion there. Is there a second? I'll second. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That passes. Our next item is item up is 4607 Market Street, a variance to city code section 18 205 for the allowance of a drive through to be located between the primary structure and the right of way. Bentley is going to present. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Bentley Ernest, and today I'll be presenting BAD 15, 1124 for 4607 Market Street. The subject property at 4607 Market Street is located within the RB Regional Business District. According to New Hanover County tax records, 4607 Market Street is a vacant parcel containing approximately 1.48 acres. The applicant is proposing to construct a new 2,460-square-foot drive through restaurant. The proposal includes a single-lane drive through uh, with associated equipment to be located between the proposed commercial structure and the Market Street right-of-way, as shown on the site plan here. Pursuant to City Code Section 18205B, the drive through facility shall not be located between a building and a right-of-way, nor shall it be on the same side of the building as the primary entrance. Market Street is designated as a semi-urban frontage street and is subject to the design standards of Section 18407.2. The proposed site plan shows a direct pedestrian access for Section 18407.2, which comes through or which crosses through the proposed drive-through lane. That vehicular access to the site will be provided from Market Street, shared with the convenience store to the east, as well as a shared driveway to the rear of both parcels. On October 8th, 2024, planning staff accepted an application for variances to the location and configuration of the proposed drive through This matter is set for hearing today, November 21st, 2024. I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. I know the applicant is here as well. Does anyone have any questions at the time? All right. Well, I know we'll have some eventually. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, would the... Um, would the the applicant or the agent for the applicant like to speak? Not unless you have yeah. questions. Sure. So it's, we, it, yeah. In deference to your time and your other business you have to attend, I don't really have any comments. So just for, I'm sorry, just for the record, can you just state your name and address? And Robert Benway. There's no more Hidden Valley's Lane, Elmire, Virginia. Right, you can go ahead. Thank you. I didn't mean to, yeah. yeah. I don't really have anything to present unless you have questions. Um, Matt, questions for Mr. Williams? Um, I guess I have one, like in the design, like for trying to comply with the city code, um, what Obstacles have you run into that your where you're at now has to be the the plan that you want to present. The main obstacle that we have in mind is the circulation question. How do we get uh, people in and out of the parking lot? Because there is a requirement for a number of cars in the queue in the code, and on top of that, Starbucks has their own requirements and desires for the 
Q. So this arrangement gives us the maximum Q and it also maximizes the space that we've been able to use on the parking lot and still provide 25 parking spaces. The parking spaces are inside the loop, if you will, of the drive through and the entrance, the main entrance to the building is on that north face of the building. So it keeps the people in the parking separated from the people. I have a question. I think the, the layout really um, promotes safety of the individuals in the parking lot trying to get to the, the front of the building without crossing through the drive. The only concern I have is the sidewalk which is right through the drive through lane uh, from Market Street to apparently a, a pickup window. Because that uh, puts people going right through your traffic lane to the drive through. Yeah, uh, we do not have significant talks with CRC yet. Um, maybe a better location would be adjacent to the driveway that goes directly from Market Street up to the drive and uh, take it out of the Take it out of where it is, take it from the building, the front building, but on the side of the building, I'd have to turn to the right or turn to the left to go to the next step. Because when I was viewing this, so this is much safer for everyone except the deputies coming off the market street. Um, anyone else have a question? Just <laughs> this here. Is this a fairly standard um, design for this type of um, store? Short answer is yes. They have two models that they generally build. Uh, they have a square, more square one, and they have a longer one. This one just fits better onto the site to maximize the Anybody else have questions? Does the city have any questions of? I'll just clarify that there is a requirement in the code and it's outlined in the case summary, um, but there is the requirement for that direct pedestrian connection off the market street. And um, I guess why, with the, the way our code is for the, the purpose of not having the drive, drive throughs out to the primary, maybe elaborate why we have, if not, we can elaborate on that. The, the preference would be to keep the circulation more internal to the site so that pedestrians coming off of the sidewalk wouldn't have those those cars to deal with. And also, I mean, uh, just to be a little bit less for aesthetics as well as safety for the pedestrians coming, you know, off the market. I just, not, not so much the pedestrians. I was sort of because like, you have people coming down Market Street and you have this flow of traffic, which is, you know, there's a distance between, but I was wondering if that, so that impact. There will be landscaping to help with the, the headlights, if that's what you're you're thinking of. Yeah, um, something being confused. I mean, that, that is something attention. That, that's come up in the past. Headlights of being in the drive through versus, you know, helping the roads. Um, anyone have any other questions of Mr. Long? I wanted to use up there in case they had questions so we could hear it on the mic. I guess uh, we'll go ahead. Uh, do you have anything else to add at this this point? No. Don't. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and open up the evidentiary hearing. Um, this is open for parties that would like to present any information of material or substance that's relevant to this matter. Is there anyone that would like to speak for or, or would like to speak in relation to this matter? Seeing we don't have any, we'll go ahead and close the evidentiary hearing. Um, would a uh, city like to enter, provide any information? The, yeah. the site plans that are in front of you were not part of your uh, original packets, but we would like to make sure that that's entered into the record as well. Okay. And, um, and sir, do you have anything else you'd like to add at all? No. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Um, I think okay. uh, we'll have amongst the board members what your, your thoughts are, or if you have any questions. I, I have a, just kind of a general statement, not about this case specifically, but um, we've seen several different national kind of folks that are trying to invest in the area and build these types of drive-throughs um, that are running into conflicts with the code and, and coming to us almost every month. 
um, at what point do we recommend a code change at the staff level? We've had conversations at the staff level about changing the code pertaining to drive through facilities, but um, we, we believe that the sites can be designed in conformance with with current code standards and that, you know, a national uh, design standard or whatever for Chick-fil-A for Starbucks for these national brands that are coming forward isn't necessarily a rationale for us to amend our code because we feel like we can expect better development going to. I guess, and have you all had conversations about the realignment of the site with the applicant? I'm not sure if there have been conversations in the TRC about the alignment outside of them just understanding that what was originally requested doesn't come to code. Um, we, we haven't provided them with any uh, site plan examples, um, but then I, I don't believe that we've had any presented to us for review. Okay. Any what are the buffer requirements between the drive through lanes and Market Street? The setback requirement, I believe, is 30 feet because of the frontage type that's there. Looking over to Grace to see if she can confirm that. But no. There's landscaping that's required okay. that in that, that setback area. Grace is I have a question for the, for the applicant, if I can. The sidewalk you've got coming off of Market Street, uh, going through the drive through lane, and there's a, uh, looks like a door, an entrance door to the restaurant right there. There is a door, but it's not an entrance door. It is a way out. Yeah. Okay, so it's really the, the sidewalk from Market Street to the side of the building really doesn't lead anywhere. Anybody else, while well, they're looking that, that up, anyone have any questions, other thoughts? Um, basically, we'll be looking at a variance because this is driveway is located between the building and the right of way. Like I said, we've had, like, we had a, another case where we had a similar situation. But some of that it depends on how it was sort of queuing up on other streets. The boat angles right down from that. It's not the exact configuration, but the uh, drive through traffic does go in front of the building. So. Yeah, so the it does go in front of the building in their market suite. I just, you know, to me, the sidewalk to nowhere is actually an endangerment because it runs into the side of the building. You got to go left or right. So you're going to maintain your presence in the drive through lane, which is not necessarily a good well, I thing. I think there's a sidewalk that comes, it goes all the way around. Sure, that's going to be the staff entrance trash going up there. Necessarily, where you want to be walking. I'm just I'm having difficulty finding, getting the real findings of fact of this. The, the lot's plenty big enough, so I think, to where this could be avoided altogether. <laughs> Anybody, any other thoughts? Mr. Chair, just yes. real quick, um, the, the sidewalk issue is an issue that could be addressed at TRC and doesn't have to be decided in here today. What you're you're just dealing with the, the drive. So there can be, be deal with this and then instruct staff to take further look. Okay. It sounds like the applicant has had that conversation. With them. Right, yeah. Just to remind you. Okay. The landscaping. I'll go ahead and. No. They do have the so the applicants have the choice between semi-urban and semi-urban parkway, correct? Yeah. 
And so um, the front maximum setback for semi urban would be 90 feet. And the front maximum setback for semi urban way would be 50. So during the TRC process, as Meredith mentioned, they would like discuss that requirement. The variance you're hearing today is just for information. Yeah. And like I said, those those things are outside our purview. <laughs> so, but, all right, thank you. Um, thoughts of this other discussion regarding? A 30-foot pole setback rather than a minimum. But the uh, minimum requirement for the depth of the street yard there, the landscaping portion is 15. Yeah. Anybody have thoughts or any additional questions? Any motion? Big question. There's been a motion to deny the variance. Is there a second? For the purpose of a vote, I, I will second it. Um, that being the case, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Um, yeah. So uh, we go back to another motion related to that. So we're out. Now it's up for someone who wants to make a motion related to the approval of the variance or of, or a variation of the of the variance. I'll make a motion to approve the variance for 4607 Market Street pursuant to city code section 18-205 to allow the drive through to be located between the primary structure and the break. Okay, there's been a motion, is there a second? I'll second that. All right. It's been motioned and second. Um all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed. No, no. Um, it's three to two. It's, if it does, there it is, fails. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. All right, we'll move on to item number five. It's uh, 104 Rutgers Run, a variance of city code 18 199 for the existing detached accessory structure to exceed the height and, of the principal building. Bentley will. Um, today, we will also be discussing 104 Rucker Run or BADV 12-1124. The subject property is located within an area rezoned from R15 moderate density single dwelling district to R10 CD medium density single dwelling conditional district, effective October 3rd, 2023. It contains one newly constructed 2,385 square foot single family dwelling residence and one newly constructed 1,056 square foot detached accessory dwelling unit. On April 16, 2024, the applicant received permitting approval from both city zoning and New Hanover County Building Safety for the construction of the 1,056 square foot detached accessory dwelling unit. On September 16, 2024, City Zoning inspected the subject property and determined that it did not comply with City Code Section 18199, which states that accessory structures shall not exceed the height of the primary structure. Building height definition as per our Land Development Code is shown here. In a survey provided by the applicant, it was confirmed that the building had been constructed as permitted even though it was 7.43 feet greater in height than the primary structure. In accordance with Land Development Code Article 8, Section 18-661, building height is defined as the vertical distance between the average undistributed grade at the foundation of the building and the highest finished roof surface in the case of a flat roof or in the case of a pitched roof to the, height, to the point halfway between the highest peak and the highest seat. On October 9th, 2024, city staff accepted an application for a variance to the height of the newly constructed accessory dwelling unit. When the need for a variance is created by an error on the part of city staff, no application fee is required. Therefore, city staff waived the applicant's fee pursuant to this expectation as outlined within the city of Wilmington fee schedule. This matter is set before the Board of Adjustment today, November 24th, 1st, 2024. 
Thank you. I'm available for questions, and we would like to submit all materials. Does anybody have any questions of Bentley this time? All right. Thank you. All right. We'll go ahead and see if the um, applicants represented would like to speak. Thank you, Joe. Good afternoon, all the members of the board. I'm Steve Coggins, we're actually Lucy. It's my pleasure to present the Lucy Applin experience. And with me, is the principal of the firm in Santa Monica. The most majority today is uh, one of three consecutive marriage events in identical circumstances, whereby William Holmes constructed three principal drawings, each with a Accessory based on the rear house plans, the main principle being called the Brunswick House and the accessory being called the Carriage House, each one having a garage. And the accessory is roughly seven feet higher than the main dwelling place as far as, far as design. This is all sort of the build and the drawings and whatnot. And nonetheless, Approve. I do have at least some photographs of the structures that show their layout that I was admitted to the record. I would like to suggest that the error here is understandable. I would suggest kind of just stuff a little busy technical on this presentation to bring up particular ornaments the table. It's not maybe able to get to it. Sure. If you look at the words. Where there is a restriction on the ability to make the accessory residence. Okay. It refers to table 18 199, the importance of section 18 99. And it refers to, in the text part of the order, it says, placement shall be subject to requirements found in the table. The table, when it's set up, it has placement. Aspects at the top and building size and dimensions at the bottom. If you go and look at the placement aspects, there's nothing about building. So it's, it's very easy if someone was, was following the syllogism of the text of the ordinance that you would not see that there is a prohibition overall on the height of the accessory. Was being no higher than the main the main building itself, and I would suggest that's something I think uh, it would be well to take a look at it. Very short, understandable text. Bad news, of course, is that this uh, here and all three structures with their accessories, two of six structures, have been uh, completed. That, that that is bad news, but the good news is is that even the accessory structures. Seven, seven feet lower than the overall 35 foot height requirement that's applicable to R10 zoning. And as shown in the photographs, as, as it turns out, immediately next door, for instance, to where these structures are built, is a, uh, a main structure that's immediately adjacent to it that is 35 feet high. So, what you've got is if you're looking at the context of the neighborhood itself, uh, there's nothing that's out of character. If you, if you can see, if you can scroll down, just a little bit, you can see what I'm talking about right here. It says here, place shall be subject requirements in this table right here. Okay? And when you look at the table, then you see you've got this part here dealing with minimum structure placement. And at the bottom, scroll up, please. Maximum building size and structure size. It's here where the height requirement is. The text that governs it only refers to the placement aspect of the table. And I think that's something that could be clarified and may well have explained there in this case. I don't know. It was something that I simply noticed. I would tender that word. I think the, uh, all the criteria here for variances readily demonstrated here, so I'm happy to try to answer any questions. Does any, anyone have any questions? We're talking about this time. Does the city have any questions? Or, so, all right. 
All right, thank you. We'll go ahead and um, we'll open up the evidentiary hearing uh, for anyone that has anything to add substantial from the public. Is there anyone that would like to? Yes, ma'am. We'll have you. everyone. My name is Terry Cavanaugh. I live at 105 Rice Road um, in Wilmington. I have never been to a city meeting before. I may use terminology that doesn't job with exactly what we're talking about here, but my concern is very real. 105 Rice Road is directly across from Rucker Run, which we've watched the development of Rucker Run as it's come into our neighborhood, which used to be a quiet little sort of trailer park there. Um, the one home that the gentleman referred to that's 35 feet is also a brand new home. So it is not in with the normal construction of our neighborhood. There, most of the homes there are single story um, ranch dwellings. Um, these homes tower above those other homes um, with the exception of the one brand new home that the gentleman referred to. Um, there's been a lot of issues with the development for those of us who live in the neighborhood of going back and getting requests for additional concrete that's been poured that wasn't permitted, that I understand is not part of this particular request for variance. But in my mind shows a developer who sort of has uh, a disregard for this project in our neighborhood um, with regard to stormwater runoff and are we gonna have a sidewalk and how is this gonna impact our Greenville Loop Road trail now where this runoff may or may not um, or into. Um, the gentleman that referred to how the verbiage is laid out with regard to placement and height, I did a simple Google. I work for Department of Defense. I have no knowledge of the underpinnings of how all of this works from a project management, but I did a simple Google and found 50% of the original structure and not to exceed the height of the structure. So in my personal opinion, I believe we've got a developer who knew full well that the houses were outside of what was allowable in the city code. There was an error, it sounds like, from what the gentleman laid out that was made. Um, and so at this point, do we just step back and go, it's okay. You can go ahead and build these homes above city code. There's not just one, there's three. The intent is, it sounds like, listening to these gentlemen earlier, for it to be a rental. So in a neighborhood where I've lived since I was 10 years old, we now have all of these structures that have been added in one little small community um, or developed as a community that we've really sort of seen from the original rezoning, it was three, and then it went to the ADUs, and now the ADUs are over height. And there's concrete that's been poured that didn't have permission, but also came back and got an exception for. So I was an HOA. Um, president of a board in Fayetteville, North Carolina, a small community. When the developer's gone, the community has to deal with anything that's out of sync that has to be addressed, stormwater runoff, anything like that. I would just ask that as you look at the considerations moving forward, was this really just an error? Did we just go ahead and look at it and go, we're going to build anyway and we're going to work concrete and we're going to do all these things and not take into consideration the neighborhood that is impacted? Um, most of the people that live there have lived there as long as I have, um, since 1970 and before. Um, and I don't think that the considerations for the neighborhood has been taken into account. And again, the one house that's 35 feet um, was another one that was just recently built. So again, I, I may not be using the right terminology. Some of the things I've said may be out of line with what's under consideration here. But I just wanted to at least stand up and speak and say that for our neighborhood, this is not what, what we had hoped would come into that property um, or how it would be looked at moving forward, just to take it as an error and move forward and allow it. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Being that there are no further people, um, I'll go ahead and close the evidentiary hearing and we'll come back to it. Would the city have anything they'd like to add? Would the, um, the applicant, do you have anything else you'd like to add in regards to the comment? No, sir, other than that, we haven't done knowledge of the plans. I 
Are, are you able to pick him up? Talking to you, you me the microphone. Okay, yes. 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 Just to be safe, just make sure it's on the on the record. We're not aware of any plans regarding the RCP on these properties. And where we're going to see going is that the state of occupancy is held up because the county is waiting for the city to be served by experiences and addition. Fully completed structure is going to get a CO. Into BAB, you can't even get a CO. So, um, for because of the height, and so we can understand how it occurred. So, the applicant had the information of, that it couldn't exceed the height of the, the main building. We submitted the plans as they are. I don't think we had any knowledge, one way or the other, about the limitation of height of the central structure. We just submitted these plans and Simply to show the dimensions of the controversy that what was submitted, uh, that we built according to what was submitted in the application. So, you know, to, to okay. so it was submitted and the permits were issued and built. Right. And now we're at the need a CO piece, but we can't get a CO until we deal with the question in front of us. That's correct. So, ultimately, plans that were approved were in error right. by a it was, it was that's correct, although arguably, as I look at the at the wording of the ordinance, ordinance, and it was construed in a certain way, it wasn't really similar. That's what I was suggesting to, to the city attorney. It's something that, that for all I know about council, I anyone may want to visit about how that's working. Because I literally read it, there is no prohibition on accessory building limits as that particular ordinance is worded. You strictly construe it in favor of, for instance, previous property. And any, I would I would disagree with that, but you know, yeah, I think where we are here is that the plans were submitted, they were approved as submitted, they were built as approved, and now um, CO can't be issued unless we grant a variance. So we're really at a you know, oops. Yeah. What do we do now? Yeah, I just I wanted to see if anyone had any more questions for Mr. Ogden, or if, if you had anything else you wanted to add, just to give it. So you know, I suppose theoretically you could put a staple in each one of these, which would increase the height of the of the main building, which would be, I suppose, some of argument even further out of character. Uh, they get in technical compliance, I suppose. Again, that that's 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 an economic waste and serious hardship for all this. Thank you, sir. Does the city have any any else they'd like to add? Yeah, just since, since we'll be hearing three different right, yeah. cases, I, I'd like to go ahead and let you know that the table within our code is regulatory. So whether it's in the table or you know expressly written in the text, it's still regulatory. Um, as far as putting a steeple on the structures to satisfy the height requirements, steeples are exempt from our height ordinance, so that that wouldn't satisfy the height, but I mean, I, but what you're you're saying, you could potentially add on to the main structures to increase that height. There would be some minimum square footage. I think it's 80 square feet that would be required to get the the height. Um, but I mean, that that is a, what the yeah, applicant was asking for the during the standard hearing. It's based on the fact that they did construct these buildings as per. All right. I mean, I, I think that's that's. The, the crux of it. I mean, you know, I think if you read the ordinance, I, in my opinion, in my mind anyway, it's clear that accessory dwelling units can't see the height of the primary structure. I think that's clear. Um, I think the issue before us here is that the plans were submitted, the plans were approved, the plans were built as submitted and approved um, with no changes that, that I'm aware of from what we've been given today. So. Yeah. So anybody have any questions? We'll go ahead and we can deliberate and talk about how we, how we move forward. Because, like I said, I it's I under like in reading it, I understand the height. I get it. Like I said, it's not. It, it doesn't confuse me. I, but you know, we see it quite often. Um, we have a situation where we 
as the entity that permitted it and proved it, missed that. Then, but we also have like this people that live around there that are impacted by that. And, like, so we've had other ones that we've, we've had to do a couple of these variances cause sec the secondary structure has been taller than the primary. And, um, you know, it's, so yeah, it's, 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 it's a hard situation. Well, but, it, this is not the first one we've done where the yeah. accessory dwelling unit exceeded the height of the primary structure. I believe in that case, it's permitted also. So, yeah, so. Uh, and, in the beginning discussion, there was a point about how the fees were waived for some of these. Can you go into that? We updated our fee schedule such that um, variances that were required for a property based on some error in the part of city staff would be waived. Otherwise, it would be a $500 application fee, but it just seemed Unfair. I mean, the, the applicants already having to wait to get a certificate of occupancy for the accessory buildings seemed uh, like an unfair ask to also charge when the, the fee variance, whatever the city does recognize that these were in their fee. That being the case, I'll make a motion that we approve the variance as requested. There's been a motion made. Is there a second? I would second. That being said, does any discussion? Had, there's a second. All those in favor of the motion for approval say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. That, that variance passes four to one. All right, we'll move on to item number six, 105, Rutgers Run, variance to city code section 18 199 for the existing detached accessory structures to exceed the height of the principal building. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Bentley Ernest, and today we'll discuss the second property, um, 105 Rucker Run, BADB 13 1124. The subject property is located within an area of three zones from R15 uh, to a R10CB district effective October, 20, October 3rd, 2023, and contains one newly constructed 2,385 square foot single family dwelling residence and one newly constructed 1,056 square foot detached accessory dwelling unit. On April 16, 2024, the applicant received permitting approval from both city zoning and New Hanover County Building Safety for the construction of the 1,056 square foot detached accessory dwelling unit. On September 16, 2024, city zoning inspected the subject property and determined that it did not comply with city code section 18199 which states that accessory structures shall not exceed the height of the primary structure. In a survey provided by the applicant, it was confirmed that the building has been constructed as permitted, even though it was 7.29 feet greater in height than the primary structure. In accordance with Land Development Code Article 8, Section 18661, building height is defined as the vertical distance from the average undistributed grade at the foundation of the building to the highest finished roof surface. In the case of a flat roof, or in the case of a pitched roof, to the point halfway between the highest peak and the highest heave. On October 9th, 2024, city staff accepted an application for a variance to the height of the newly constructed accessory dwelling unit. When the need for a variance is created by an error on the part of city staff, no application fee is required. Therefore, city staff waived the applicant's fee pursuant to this expectation as outlined within the City of Wilmington fee schedule. This matter is set before the Board of Adjustment, November 20, 21st, 2024, and I am available to answer any questions that you may have. All right. Anybody have any questions? All right. Thank you. Ask if the um, applicant would like to speak. This is sound like a warrior. I'd like to incorporate by reference all papers and maps in the first uh, hearing this night. Is that okay for the record? Can, okay. I, that, that works. Thank you. May I stipulate the same for the next? All right. Thank you. Um, does the city have anything else before? All right. I'll go ahead and call the uh, open the evidentiary hearings. If anyone from the public has anything they'd like to state uh, that relevant to this matter at this time, is there anything one would like to speak? Having none, well, I'll close the evidentiary hearing. Um, is there anything else from the city? Anything else from the applicant? 
Um, all right, that being the case, uh, it's open for discussion or motion. Well, I just like real quick. I mean, this is, is an unfortunate situation and it could have been avoided at permitting, but it wasn't, it, it carried through, you know, appeals to our decisions for superior court and a lot of time and a lot of money. And the bottom line is the project was built as permitted. So I just, I think this is very unfortunate. I do too. And I, I live in this community. So I, I hear what the, the neighbor is saying and I totally appreciate it. I just, I think our hands are tied on this one because the city did approve the permits as submitted. Um, I'm not really sure what we can do about it at this point. And um, and my um, situation, like I said, I you see there's errors in the path that you sort of depend on the, your city, your county to make these. Uh, part of my opposition is just the fact that someone that's also doing, the, that's taking the project on has a responsibility. And I think it's, and this, our process is not perfect because there should be actually a process to handle that type of errors outside of variances. And that's my only behind it so it's just a uh, more stance than yeah i feel bad that someone makes an error that something is permitted but also professionals should know what these standards are well and i don't think it's fair to penalize the applicant and withholding the co because of an error city staff and i do think if it went to be reporting cost a lot of time and a lot of money and uh, then the co's would be issued and they'd be available so so, that being said, I make a motion to approve the variances request. Did motion did second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? One nay. I will move on to the next item. Twelve one. Oh, sorry, one one two. Rutgers Run. Variance to City Code eighteen one nine nine for the existing detached accessory structures to exceed the height in principal building. Asia Boo. <laughs> Our last line of the day. Um... 112 Rucker Run, BADB 14-1124. Um, the subject property is located within an area rezoned from R15 to R10 CD, effective October 3rd, 2023, and contains one newly constructed 2,385 square foot single family dwelling residence and one newly constructed 1,056 square foot detached accessory dwelling unit. On April 16th, 2024, uh, on April 16, 2024, the applicant received permitting approval from both City Zoning and New Hanover County Building Safety for the construction of the 1,056-square-foot 1, 1, detached accessory dwelling unit. On September 16, 2024, City Zoning inspected the subject property and determined that it did not comply with City Code Section 18199, which states that accessory structures shall not exceed the height of the primary structure. In a survey provided by the applicant, it was confirmed that the building had been constructed as permitted, even though it was 6.88 feet greater in height than the primary structure. In accordance with Land Development Code Section 18661, building height is defined as the vertical distance from the average undistributed grade at the foundation of the building to the highest finished roof surface in the case of a flat roof, or in the case of pitched roof, to a halfway point between the highest peak and the highest heat. On October 9th, 2024, city staff accepted an application for a variance to the height of the newly constructed accessory dwelling unit. When the need for a variance is created by an error on the part of city staff, no application fee is required. Therefore, city staff waive the applicant's fee pursuant to this expectation as outlined within the city of Wilmington fee schedule. This matter is set for the Board of Adjustment, November 21st, 2024. I'd like to submit all materials to the record and am available for any questions. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Um, the, Mr. Coggins, you good with your presentation before? Yes, incorporate by reference, if you would please, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I suggest that uh, since you're incorporating Mr. Coggins' comments, um, that you would also incorporate. Uh, so, uh, okay. The the okay. Yes. Items so, we'll note that we will incorporate the public hearing comments into all both items. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Well, we'll we're gonna. I'll open up the just once. I'm gonna open that up. No, no, you're definitely welcome to speak. Nope, no worries. Um, anything else from the city? All right. Um, we'll go ahead and open the evidentiary hearing for anyone from the public who would like to speak. Our voice just, carries. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. You just stand yeah, here. You're fine. I think my voice carries. Um, I, I understand where we are. 
I understand that we're saying it's an unfortunate situation. I understand that what I'm saying will have no impact on the decisions. But I do find it interesting that through the construction process, this was not caught at any point. Um, I recently did a renovation on my home and couldn't get an inspection passed because we didn't have the house address in the right place. And so I find it very disturbing that through this entire process, as people were doing inspections and coming and going, that nothing was taught to the to the fact that these properties are seven feet over the height of the primary dwellings, which were pretty much already in place because we've watched them come and go. So I, I would just ask the city as, as we say it's an unfortunate thing and, and it'll cost and you know there's nothing we can do. Um it, it puts that bad feeling in the in the in the public's view in that. Something as simple as a house number would prevent something from passing an, ex an inspection. And yet a seven foot variance on three large structures with three primary structures was not caught during that process. And so it's just disturbing. It's just, where's the balance in that? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Seeing that there aren't, aren't any more, we'll go ahead and close the evidentiary hearing. Um, anything else from the city? Can speak to the inspections comment. I would like to hear yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Um, New Hanover County does building code inspections for the city. So city staff does not go out throughout the construction process and look at electrical or plumbing, framing, or foundation work or anything like that. We we review the permits for zoning compliance, like setbacks and height and area of the structure prior to permitting. And then New Hanover County, we typically inspect that along the way. They make sure that the foundations are in the right location for setbacks and things of that sort. In this case, when we were originally signing off on the permit, we did not uh, make the notation that it couldn't exceed the height of the, the principal dwelling. And, and that's a standard that's been in our code since about 2013 or, or so. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe a bit prior to that, maybe like 2009. So you will see throughout the city accessory buildings that do exceed the height of the, the principal dwellings. Um, there have been conversations about looking at that, making sure that that's still an appropriate requirement within the city. We haven't proposed to make any changes to that. But um, as far as, as inspecting, house numbers are something that we will look at in the final inspection, just as we look at the, the height of the structures and call that on the final inspection for this property and didn't issue a compliance because it didn't meet that standard, just like without house numbers, it wouldn't have been. So anyway. Yeah, that's one more question. Um, I, I, I can't because it's not in the, the public hearing part, I apologize, but after we can be here for quite to follow up with that. Sure. Thank you. So can, can I ask a question? If if the plans had come through as they were, do, do the plans get denied or does city staff make a note on said plans that I didn't understand your comment about there was there was no there was no note on the plans like New, the New Hanover County wouldn't have known because there wasn't a note on the plans that it can't exceed primary dwelling. In yeah. this instance, we did have elevations that show the height of the accessory building mm -hmm. and the height of the dwelling and so if you catch it, my question is, is there a note on the plans so that when the inspection is done by somebody other than the city, that they they know to look for that? Or do the plans just get denied? You, you just don't get it. Okay. Okay. Um, I can speak. Um, zoning, well, when the other inspectors for the county are out there inspecting what they're out there to inspect, the framing, the footings, the plug, the electrical, they're not even looking at the height, the zoning back. They're looking at exactly what they need to do to make sure that it's built in code. So I can see how they would catch it. But it unfortunately, it does come back and claim that you yeah. it, And it is a frustrating process because you are bouncing between city and county. It's like not the best, but I mean, I understand it's what our process is, but it's not the easiest. <laughs> so well, it's, it's not the county's place to see if the proposed construction of the under construction property meets zoning requirements. That's the city's responsibility. 
Yeah, I think the communication though too. That should be a way that there's some. And, and I don't use this by way of an excuse, but just to help everyone understand the, the permitting process. Um, oftentimes, you know, whenever builders submit their plans, they will be rejected the first time. And with the notes that you need to fix this, you need to, you know, a, a list of things that need to be corrected. Sometimes you'll see those same plans five times and they're different whenever they come back. And so we have to go through and things that we may have looked at on the first review changed since that review, make sure that they're still compliant for each subsequent review. Does anyone have any any other questions or statements? Right. In the uh, in the case, is there anyone has a motion? Make a motion to approve the variance as requested. And a motion is there a second? I'll second that. All right, it's been seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Uh -huh. Anyone opposed? So any, I'm sorry, aye. All the, anyone opposed? One nay. Um, that is that variance is approved. Um, that is the last item we have. Um, does city have anything? Yeah. And so, Mr. Chair, you do have um, uh, two documents in front of you. These are copies of the work um, rules of procedure. One is a clean copy, and the other is a red line copy from August. The red line copy will turn over to back to see. Um, the um, appointments committee has made some recommendations, and I know you've already, they've already incorporated the one about adding two additional. Um, they've already made that uh, part of the rules to add two additional alternates. The other suggestion that they had had to do with the procedure, and they want to suggest that you change your rules um, to indicate that that all members need to anticipate being present at every meeting. Um, in the event, just like you did today, be able to, to jump in at the, at the last minute. That is really, that is the only substantial change, but you would have to vote on that because it's part of the rules. And if you look um, to the one that's on the bottom, the red line version, that's on the second page, page two. And it simply reads that uh, it adds in the requirement for the two additional alternates. It reads five members and four alternates. And then it says that um, that the alternates should plan to attend all scheduled meetings for uh, regular meetings. Uh, and I think that that's, that's really the only, other than there was one typo in here. And, we changed Ron Saturday to stay down at the bottom. <laughs> um, but we would ask for you to consider that and take a vote on that. Um, but that's the only substantial change. And that's just, like, like I said, for the exact same reason that you're having, um, that you switched out today so that we don't have to have people continue their items um, and don't have the alternates being, being called at the last minute and not being. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. that's coming yeah. as a suggestion. Okay. Anyone have any questions? I know you just you got this. Question with those changes? Solve this from getting lectured by a city council. Okay. Um, I can never promise that, but I would hope so. I'd make a motion to. Is, is there a second? I'll second that. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That those are changed. Thank you. And so the next meeting that's in Thaling Hall will have all members and the alternates. Yes. Okay. Perfect. They in just the time between now and then, we will be setting up um, a training session for the two new alternate members. Um, we just haven't been able to identify a time yet that works. Well, we do have identified the members. Yes, yes but cool. lots of people. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but it's good because, like, a lot of times we'd have these, and at the last minute, you have to tell someone you have to have unanimous. You know, and it's not fair to the person that puts all this money into their, if they have representation and that kind of thing. So I think it's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate okay. your consideration. Any, anything else for, the, for today? Well, just for your knowledge, City me. Council will vote to approve your amendment to rules at their meeting in December. Okay. Great.
Okay. Anything else? All right. Then take a motion to adjourn. Thank you. All those in favor? Uh, all right, we're gone. Thank you.